Hey everyone, I hope you are doing well. This is a live stream here on the Rachel Varga podcast, the Rachel Varga YouTube channel, and here on the Rachel Varga Facebook page. If this is your first time joining in, welcome. I am a board certified aesthetic nurse specialist. And since 2011, I've performed about 18,000 procedures. And I love just helping people figure out what they could be doing at home and in clinic to really help themselves stabilize their skin, improve their skin health, and you know, really just age well. I also work with a number of celebrities as well. And we have joining us on the call, Katie Moore. I love Katie so much. You're all the way from California. And you just asked me the best questions ever. And we had a few we have a number of people hopping on live here. Welcome, welcome. If you're new to StreamYard, you do just have to quickly just leave the call grant access for Facebook and StreamYard to talk so that when you leave a comment, I can, you know, share it with the group. So I'd love to just get some Q&A. We're having lots of people hop on live here. So I can't see who's live unless you leave a comment. So please leave a comment in the comment section. And uh, we're here to just kind of like fire through what we just talked about in summer skin camp. So tell us a little bit about yourself, Katie. Thank you so much for having me, Rachel. It is such a pleasure to talk to you about all things skincare, especially in the summer months. Um, so I am kind of a self-proclaimed biohacker. Uh, I have my own YouTube channel. Um, I'm also on Instagram. You can kind of find me on all my platforms at Katie Type A. And yeah, I'm just excited to kind of dive into the weeds with some of this stuff because I suffered from acne for years and I still occasionally get breakouts. And the summer months tend to be really difficult for me, especially with the excess sweating, maybe sometimes putting too much makeup on, the makeup sweats off, et cetera. So I would love to get into some of the thick of it with you on ways to help mitigate some of that acne flare up and those those redness, you know, scarring that we tend to see a lot more of during the summer months. Yeah, definitely. I would love to go through that. And we are yeah. going to be focusing more on like red acne scarring pigmentation in this really fun live Q&A call. Just to FYI, uh, what, what is Summer Skin Camp? It's basically this really cool private group where we're all learning together. So you're going to get a little bit of a preview of, as to all the fun that's happening there. And if you're just hopping on the live, be sure to leave a comment in the comment section so I know who you are, what your questions are. Okay, so first of all, yeah. let's uh, dive right in. Yeah, so um, so if you could just walk us through some of your top recommendations for things that we can do at home to kind of minimize these flare-ups during the summer, especially as it pertains to acne and breakouts. Yeah, absolutely. First of all, you want to stabilize your skin with a at-home skincare pro protocol that's customized to you. This is really critical. These are just a few of the things that work really well, as we're Edward Scissorhands here, that work <laughs> really well for me to help control my acne prone skin. Uh, you know, I'm at that time of the month for me. I had three breakouts pop up three days ago and they are pretty well gone. So to figure out what's right for you, I do recommend that you book a one-on-one -on -one call with me at rachelvarga.ca. But absolutely cleansing the skin morning and night, moisturizing the skin morning and night, sun protection every single day, and exfoliating a few times a week. And you started doing that recently as well. And how are things going for you? Amazingly well. So I I tend to um, kind of get a lot of like redness right around here, especially mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. morning. That is gone. Um, I, I took my first like makeup free selfie the other day and it, it was just, it was illuminating. It was like, my skin looks glassy and the texture is actually changing quite a bit too. And that's only after two weeks of, of using, um, you know, some of the, the protocol that you shared with me. And so it's, it, you know, the proof is in the pudding. You can kind of see my, even my fiance said like, my skin looks really good. So oh it's, uh, you know, it's, it's definitely one of those things that like, it's, this has been a battle for me for years with really bad skin and I'm just starting to now see some of the effects of patience and also taking good care of your skin. It's mm -hmm. key. 
Yeah, absolutely. And what we do on the inside out is really key as well. So if you haven't yet done any inner lab work, I do recommend that you start to investigate getting some, you know, potential nutrient genetic tests done. So a great thing that I did recently in our last live call in summer skin camp was I did a live DNA test. And you can actually order yours at toolboxgenomics.com slash Rachel, and you'll get 10% off of your kit. The ones for skin are really great. Uh, the detox and the nutrient panels are helpful for you to just isolate which ingredients in your skincare or which foods you should be avoiding, which can actually cause inflammation of the skin and make your red acne scars and pigmentation just a little bit worse. So, and it's, it's so different for just absolutely everyone. So make a protocol. Mm -hmm. I used to suffer from, you know, the excess foundation syndrome <laughs> where I would just like try to cover up my acne scars with so much foundation and, and powder. And I think it just like clogged my pores and made things worse. So mm -hmm. what would be your kind of go-to makeup protocol for people suffering from acne? Yeah. Keeping it simple, right? We just talked about this in our live session in summer skin camp. Cleanse the skin morning and night, moisturize your sunscreen every single day. That's non-negotiable. Using one that is non-comedogenic, which isn't going to make your skin break out and that's talc-free and that's mineral-based, obviously. And just a little concealer and, you know, you're contouring your eye makeup. That's the goal. That's what we want to be doing. We want to get your skin looking so good that you don't have to wear foundation and powder to hide congestion and inflammation and irritation. That's the goal. And that's really what we're working towards. And thanks to you, I've actually been able to get away with just wearing my Tizo tinted sunscreen Love and it. I, and a little mascara and I'm like out the door and I've ne I never thought that was possible ever. So like, yeah, thank you. Yeah, the, <laughs> the, the photo you shared, uh, you can check out uh, our social Katie type A and also at Rachel Varga official. It's just a gorgeous summer photo of you. And, and, and my freckles. Awesome. <laughs> so I sometimes get blackheads and I'd love to get your thoughts on like, what is the right way to get rid of them? Mm -hmm. Well, I really find that when I'm properly exfoliating, I actually don't get congestion. And when I do get a breakout and I just spend extra time exfoliating with, uh, you know, one of my favorite scrubs here, it's great. It's got this like grit to it. It's magnesium spheres. And you can actually just really break down that, that um, breakout. And yeah, I don't really ever get blackheads by just following a basic protocol. If you want to get my sophisticated skin cheat sheet download, head over to my website, rachelvarga.ca. It's this little pop-up register for my newsletter and you'll get that in your inbox ASAP because that's really where you want to start. You want to just start with the basics. So I outline all those five steps in my sophisticated skin cheat sheet, but you don't want to be going too aggressive with your um, extractions because what happens is you can cause more inflammation to the skin and make matters worse. Mm -hmm. So if I were to get like an in-clinic treatment uh, for red acne scarring, what is there a risk of getting a lot of sun the next day or even the day of? Maybe you can talk a little bit about the sun exposure risk of clinic treatments. Yeah, for sure. So obviously in this in this call here, we're just sort of breezing through, scratching the surface of a couple of topics here. And there's lots of great in-clinic options for getting rid of red acne scars, uh, you know, facial pigmentation, brown spots, stimulating collagen, and also resurfacing those scars. Generally, what I like to recommend is just stabilize your skin with a great routine that's been curated just for you. And for about two weeks, have your treatment done. And then you really want to reduce your um, sun exposure for about a week or two afterwards. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Good to know. Mm -hmm. And then, um, so I, you know, I love quick fixes and I'm curious if there's anything that I could do at home that would just like really get rid of that, you know, uh, inflammation and redness from an acne breakout. For like a hot date, right? For like a hot date, yeah. you know, <laughs> or if you're, if you're, you know, going out and taking pictures and stuff like that during mm -hmm. the summer. Yeah. So uh, the question is, how do we get rid of red inflammation mm -hmm. fast? Well, the thing is, is that if you go online and you're like, typing that in, you're going to get all sorts of gimmicks. And, and really, there isn't anything that's going to make them go away, like 
in an hour or two. Basically what I do for my acne prone skin is I cleanse my skin morning and night. I'll do a double cleanse in the evening. I'll use my, my scrub here. Uh, when I am sort of like at that point in my cycle where I'm menstruating, I'll make sure that I spend a little extra time exfoliating those spots. And then I'll follow it up with um, one of my favorite spot treatments with a bit of benzoyl peroxide salicylic acid just right on the spot. There's also a legal peptide 10 in one of my favorite acne products, which reduces uh, its antimicrobial. And then I'll mm. follow it up with the salicylic acid acne serum, my moisturizer and my sunscreen. So when you're hitting a breakout on those levels to, you know, basically take care of the bacteria, right? Your benzoyl peroxide is going to help flake that uh, breakout off. You're using things like illegal peptide 10 to also reduce the bacteria. You're feeding your skin, you're moisturizing it, you're sun protecting it, you're going to have less of an opportunity of that redness to stick around longer. Because mm -hmm. that redness is called post inflammatory hyperpigmentation. It's probably the most frustrating part of having a breakout on it, right? A hundred percent. Yeah, that is, it is undoubtedly the worst because you're just like, no matter what I do, I just can't get this redness to go away. Yeah, I hear you. Mm hmm. Yeah. And so the next question. Yeah. So, so I, you just touched on salicylic acid and that was actually something I used for years to help combat acne. And I never really knew if I should apply it like during the summer months, like before or after my sunscreen, before or after my moisturizer, what does that look like? Yeah. So salicylic acid, you know, it's an active. So before making any lifestyle modifications, it's, you should always check with your physician. This is for educational informational purposes only, but salicylic acid is routinely used uh, on acne prone skin. It's something that I absolutely need to use in my cleanser to uh, reduce that oil production. Uh, however, overuse of it will cause a little bit of flaking. So in our First live call in Summer Skin Camp, we had everybody get a baseline of their skin and just like really help you understand how to skin type yourself, what your skin conditions are, what your skin goals are. It's a really fun exercise. Mm -hmm. So you wash your face, you use your active serums, then you moisturize, then you sun protect. It's pretty simple. It doesn't have to be complicated. Yeah. That's what I love about your protocols. It just, it's like, a couple of steps. It doesn't have to be like 17 products, you know? Yeah. Um, and, uh, but one product that you also have turned me on to and I love is derma rolling. Mm -hmm. But if you have acne, should you be derma rolling on it? Should you derma roll around it? What does that look like? Yeah. So derma rolling is a great option. There's, you know, decades of research to support what's called collagen induction therapy. And I love my little gold roller here. So pretty so gorgeous oh my gosh i love the weight to it as well yeah now, there's different types of rollers there's different lengths so in a one-on-one -on -one consultation i kind of go over if it's a good option for you and also help you get sorted with the right length and what products to mm -hmm. use afterwards but it's really it can be quite helpful for acne scarring however with you know active breakouts we don't want to be moving bacteria around too much mm. so i do have some suggestions uh, on that. And also when you're, you know, popping zits, you really don't want to um, be spreading that bacteria around mm -hmm. with your fingers. You have to be really careful with that. But things like vitamin A that can be used with dermal rolling are really helpful as well to promote cell turnover. And uh, yeah, so so I do have some specific recommendations on that based on someone's uh, specific goals. Yeah. Um, and I actually have been using derma rolling for some of my, uh, red acne scars and it's been really helping. Awesome. So is there anything else that you would recommend for at home treatments to kind of reduce this, uh, red acne scarring or is there anything in clinic that you could talk about briefly? Yeah. So your sunscreen every day, I mean, that's pretty mm -hmm. well non-negotiable. So especially when we go from our twenties and up and we get any type of inflammation in our skin, whether it's a cut on our body mm -hmm. or a red pimple, that post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation is what's causing that uh, that that, uh, that that injury to stick around longer. So you have to use your sunscreen every single day. So basic skincare, your stabilizing routine, 
And yes, there are some incredible treatments that you can do in the clinic as well, which obviously I'll make specific recommendations when I meet with people one-on-one, -on -one, which you can do at rachelvarga.ca. You can book an online one-on-one -on -one call with me. But there's so many incredible options available today. But recommendations uh, need to be based on your goals and also what your specific skin type is to avoid things like side effects. Very good point. Yeah. You don't want to just be like buying stuff online and just putting it all over your face because that could actually do more long-term damage than good. Yeah. Um, and then uh, if you have both red acne and brown spots, like which one do you treat first? Um, I guess it probably depends on the person, but you know, how do those treatments compare? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, when you're feeding your skin, right, you're, you're, cleansing the skin, you're setting the stage, and then you're putting your moisturizer on. Your moisturizer is almost like a multivitamin for your skin. Then you're using your sun protection to basically protect it from accelerated aging, like loss of elastin collagen and things like that. So when you start to just follow a routine that's customized for you, that's right for your skin with ingredients that are in alignment with what you're body physiologically wants and responds well to. That's why I referenced uh, potentially doing some lab work and maybe even some specific genetic uh, lab panels through toolboxgenomics.com forward slash Rachel. So that, you know, things like coconut oil, people use coconut oil, but some people actually can't process that product well. It's fascinating, but it's touted as being, you know, this miracle product for people. Uh, so it just goes to show you that what we eat and what we put on our skin should be highly customized to our specific goals and needs. So it, when it comes to what we want to treat first, typically that redness in the breakouts with following good routine, you know, starting with an initial laser treatment, that's going to be sort of the easiest thing to take care of. And then you can dive into more some resurfacing treatments for the actual acne scars themselves, like the pitted scars, the ice pick scars, the rolling scars things like that. So yeah, treatments that are great for pigmentation are out there. And then also treatments that are great for resurfacing, but not all lasers are made equally. There's a lot of garbage out there that is actually quite astounding for me to see when I try all these, these devices, you know, there's, there's a lot of medical grade options that just really mm -hmm. fall flat in regards to how much they cost for the results that you get the pain and, uh, and all of that. Um, and so moving on to, you know, obviously I am using my sunscreen every day, but if I do get burnt, is there, you know, what's your go-to remedy, especially for like, you know, burns on the face? I usually get it right around my nose. Do you use like whole aloe vera leaf? You know, I, I know I use that on my skin and that can sometimes help. Were there any other products that would reduce redness from a sunburn? Yes, yeah, so this is really important because uh, a few days ago, when we did our skin typing in our in our live call together, you and I, we are very prone to skin cancers because we were sort of like that European descent. Mm -hmm. We don't have a lot of melanin in our skin, which gives us a higher level of innate protection from sun damage. So you and I, we just we burn like that, right? And it's really important for us to know that to know what our skin type actually is, so that we can take care of it and live our life in a way that, you know, we still want to enjoy the sun to get our vitamin D, obviously, but we want to make sure that we're protecting it. So do I use aloe vera leaf myself for burns? No, I really actually like going with a really good, clean, locally made product. Um, so I make those recommendations when I meet with you or just send me a DM or an email info at rachelvarga.ca. I'm here to support you guys, but you want to keep the skin well hydrated afterwards. And I wouldn't go for these over the counter sunburn remedy products because they're usually full of parabens and other toxic ingredients like parabens, phthalates, sulfates, artificial dyes, fragrances, tested on animals and, and all things. So when it comes to redness on my face, I really like to um, just keep my skin well hydrated and uh, that. So, so nourishing the skin afterwards mm -hmm. and 10% of all skin cancers as per a article I read in an ophthalmic um, scientific magazine is 10% occur around the eyes. So that's why mm -hmm. if you think about it, the sun's rays are coming down at this angle. So we're typically getting you know, those precancerous lesions develop on the, the temple here, around the eyes, even on the lash line. 
and even around the nose. So like the bridge of the nose are really common areas to get those precancerous lesions. So that makes a lot of sense. It's also very, it's like the thinnest part of your, your face too, it right? Is. It's a very sensitive area. Yes. It's typically where we start to see the initial signs of aging mm. is, is the ocular area, the eye area. That's what we call it. So the last thing we want to do is put some filler in there to try and fix it. I wrote a paper on that last mm. year that I won an award on. Uh, it's, it's all about safety. So if you're just not sure what's right for you, uh, you know, I do recommend having a call with me. Yeah. So this is a fun one. Um, you know, that old saying abs are made in the kitchen. Well, <laughs> I'm curious if the same thing applies to your skin health, you know, how much of a factor does food actually play on how healthy your skin appearance is? Yeah. I mean, it's pretty key. I love to just use specific supplements that really, I find gives me almost like an internal sun protection so that when I go outside, I am less likely to burn. And yes, it's a thing. There are some enzymes that we can actually take to prevent that hyperpigmentation in the skin, which has over 15 years of third party lab tests to, uh, you know, yeah. So if you have questions about supplements, just let me know. But when it comes to food, I recommend that you meet with a nutritionist or do a specific genetic panel. So for example, toolboxgenomics.com forward slash Rachel, either go for the detox or the nutrient panel to really help you isolate which foods and ingredients in your skincare you should be getting more of, or you should be getting less of. Mm. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, we're in a day and age now, Rachel, where it's like, things are so personalized. Every, you know, why where the full regenerative medicine yeah. is going, it's highly customized. I even have my own vitamins being shipped to me from a company what? that like took my blood and is making recommendations. It's like, why wouldn't we apply the same thing to our food and our skin health? It's yeah. a no brainer, you know, I'm right there with you. Yeah. And then I know you, you touched a little bit on, on this, but are there any other tests that we can kind of figure out what food groups are really good for a skin type? Yeah. It's say, for example, you're on a limited budget. You can't afford to do these uh, panels. They're about $250 uh, American. Mm -hmm. So basically when I eat a food and I sneeze 10 to 15 minutes later, what's happening is my body's having a histological response or histamine response to what are the ingredients in that food product or like a drink I just had. And it's like clockwork. If something isn't quite right for me, that's what will happen. I'll start sneezing. It's fascinating. So once you just start to clue into these cues that your body's giving you about things that, you know, say you have something and then you have an upset tummy or you didn't sleep very well, or when you went to go to the washroom, you, you know, your, your bowel movements were a little bit off. You need to just start getting in tune and intuitive with what your body wants on every single level, body, mind, spirit, and energy. It doesn't just apply to your skin. Yeah. But you're and some a huge reflection of what's going on. And sometimes symptoms can even show up for you later. You know, like mm -hmm. I'm, I recently did a panel where I um, was informed that like almonds are, you know, cause of food sensitivity for me. And I eat a lot of almonds and a lot of almond butter. And the symptoms of like bloating and fatigue don't show up for like 24 to 48 hours later. Right. But I do notice that cadence. And so now I'm just so much more aware of those things that that can happen. So it, it, you're absolutely right. Cluing into your feelings after, um, you know, certain foods, it's so important. Yeah. You gotta um, experience the feels, right? So yeah. I, before I was eating a ton of quinoa, oh, quinoa is great. It's like the super grain, right? Whole food, whatever. I did my testing. Nope. Don't do well with grains. <laughs> mm -hmm. Modified paleo is actually something that I do really well with. Same. Great. And so, um, you know, in addition to the antioxidants that we can probably get from a lot of natural blueberries and, and different fruits, you know, what are some, some of your go-to supplements for maintaining your skin, skin health? Yeah, I just actually did a post on this on my social media at Rachel Varga official and also here on the uh, Facebook page. So in regards to supplements, my recommendations will obviously be different for everybody depending on your skin needs, but there are some really great options for, um, if you have, say for example, melasma and things like that. And in our summer skin camp live call, what did I do? I took my supplements live. Mm -hmm. 
I practice what I preach, you guys. So yes, you want to go with products that you know, you're not just getting online through these third party websites, you are actually getting them from a trusted provider or directly from the manufacturer. A uh, big safety PSA here is you don't want to just be getting what you know, the latest social influencer is talking about. I, I mentioned this earlier that there are these, you know, gummies that are available that number one are dyed this like bright color. And then on YouTube, you can actually just check out that lab door did a third party test on these gummies that are like all over They're in like Cosmo magazine and all these other, um, you know, media publications and they're paid advertorials, right? So you have to be very careful. You have to read the fine print when you're, you know, reading a blog or something like that. Is this a paid advertorial? Because they are snuck in there. Same with vitamin C, antioxidants for the skin. It's just crazy. And so Labdor basically did a test and it was uh, determined that when people had two of these gummies, it actually exceeded their daily allotment for lead. It exceeded the daily allowable amount that you should be having to avoid lead toxicity. Like, what? that's so upsetting. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. And the reason why I think is a lot of these um, ingredients, these products are being manufactured in the USA, but where are the actual ingredients coming from? Are they coming from overseas, right? Where the um, restrictions on the quality and trace amounts of say lead aren't, the regulations aren't there. So that's kind of like a workaround. So you have to be really careful on the, the product webpage, you know, where is it manufactured? Where are these uh, ingredients being sourced from? So one of my favorites is um, I really like this brand here. And if you had a hard time seeing it, just send me an email, uh, info at rachelvarga.ca. And I can, you know, get a sense of what sort of your, your goals are and things like that and uh, help you out a little bit. Yeah. And I think just to kind of touch on that, it's so important to be a conscious consumer. And I know you dive deep into this with Stacey Lindsay, uh, yeah. who is one of the former editors of Goop in mm -hmm. your podcast mm -hmm. about that and things that you can really look for to educate yourself so that you don't fall into that trap of just seeing something with beautiful marketing and buying it and then ending up doing more harm than good to your body. Yeah. And even just that message of, you know, you'll see this in media or you're not good enough, or if you're not doing this, you're not doing that. And you know, it's not about that. It's about doing things that bring you joy. If using a moisturizer brings you joy because it makes your skin feel good, make that a priority for you. If exercising brings you joy, make it a priority as well. And so I just really want to encourage you guys, if you're wanting to just start to look after your skin and age really well, no one's going to, you know, tell you to do it, you have to make the decision to age well and feel good and, you know, be a positive, um, have a positive impact in the world around you. And truly, uh, we've, we've discussed this a number of times here, Katie, especially I talk about this all the time on the Rachel Barker podcast, truly cultivating balance between your body, mind, spirit, energy does seem to bring forth a higher level of radiance and beauty in the thousands of people that I've worked with both in person and online. It's just mm -hmm. across the board. Those are the key elements. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Mm -hmm. So where can people find you, Katie? Thanks so much for joining us today yeah. on this Thank live q &A. Well, you can find me in summer skin camp. All, uh, I'll be there all summer long. <laughs> it's it's actually fun, hey? It is such a fun group of people. It's a community that you're starting to build with very similar like-minded people who care about their body, mind, and spirit. And we're all collaborating and learning just so much about how to protect your skin for the, for the long term. because guess what? This is, you know, this is what you're, you have to live in your body for the next X number of years and why not take care of it, you know, at any age, but like, especially for me, I'm in my early thirties and I'm just, I'm now learning how to protect it for the next 30, 40, 50 years. And that's, you know, that's been really helpful. Um, but you can find me at, um, on YouTube. I'm at Katie type a, I actually did a full interview with Rachel on my YouTube channel. And we go deep into everything derma rolling. It is just, it's, she's such a wealth of knowledge on that. So you definitely want to check that out. And then you can also find me on Instagram um, at Katie type A as well. 
Amazing. Yeah. You, you just asked me the best questions. I love having you uh, do these like rapid fire Q and A. Um, so much fun. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And yeah, it's just great to see some of you guys hopping on here live. And we just wrapped up a live call as well in summer skin camp. So uh, yeah, seasonally, I do recommend that you also switch up what you're doing to your skin, your lifestyle, because depending on the season, we need different things. We're gonna be outside more in the summer. We're gonna be sweating a little bit more. We wanna wear less makeup. So we gotta get that skin on point and then protect it with the right type of supplements from the inside and out. And then also in the wintertime, we're inside more, we have more dry, dry heat and things like that. So, and also the winter is a really good time to really take advantage of, you know, lasers and in clinic options. So yeah, I'm here to help support you guys. And if you have any questions, just send me an email info at rachelvarga.ca and hang out with me at Rachel Varga official on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube and how much fun was the session today? It was so much fun. Like I, I'm going to be messaging all of my friends and telling them they have to join summer skin camp because it not only like has been just such a fun way to kind of break up everything going on in the world with quarantine, but it, like, it really is a great place for you to ask questions with somebody who's so tuned into the industry trends and really is going to make some great recommendations for long-term skincare health and for, for your skincare during the summer months when a lot of us can start sweating more. And, you know, there's just a lot that can come up with your skin during the summer. And so to be able to ask you questions directly and have other, you know, really um, well-established doctors coming in and talking, it's just been fa fantastic. And I'm, I'm just having the time of my life. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that means the world. And that's the feedback I'm getting from others in summer skin camp too. It's, it's really my pleasure. And it's really my life's purpose to just help you guys make smarter choices for, you know, navigating being a human and just helping to improve the lives of others along the way. So a lot of what we talk about is it's actually a lot less skin deep than you might think. But yes, definitely bringing in the science of beauty and you know, the latest in regards to skin and rejuvenation and, and health and practices. Because as you know, I'm uh, being interviewed by and interviewing some of the, you know, the biggest biohacking icons, health wellness icons out there. So I'm learning so much uh, in that process too. And I just love sharing it with you guys. All right, so thanks so much for joining in everybody. And I'd love to hear from you. Send me a message, send me an email. Contact information is going to be listed below in this post uh, for both Katie and myself. So hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye. Bye.